one of the things that's unique, I think, that Literacy First offers is that customization piece. The other thing that is extremely unique for us is we are almost an additional staff member. By the time we're finished with the three years, my experience is it turns into four, into five, <laughs> because we are such an integral part of the staff. We're more than a consultant, we're a staff member. So for us to really get to know the school or the district that we're working with, and the best way for us to help them, we're looking at a site analysis. The second thing that we like to do is to do a walkthrough and the walkthrough of the classrooms is with the administrators, central office and building administrators, plus the uh, Literacy First reading specialist if they're in place, so that we can walk through the classrooms and then with a form that Literacy First provides, be able to do just a general assessment of where the urgent needs are and where we can best address it. On top of that, of course, is you know, the exceptional training and resources that comes. But that first initial site analysis, walk through, and then that leads us to the customized three-year implementation plan. That's the beginning steps. Generally speaking, we're looking at things that um, the administrators, the principal, the assistant principal, um, are doing as instructional leaders. And it, they are very specific checklists that we're looking at and a continuum of growth that we're looking at through the three years. So it isn't just um, a general term, which is difficult, I think, for me to achieve because I don't have specifics. So we want to give them specifics. These are driven by what we find with the site plan and, and with the initial visit and initial information. And it is adaptable and changeable throughout the three years to meet the growing needs of the school. Um, it's also looking at the support the district is giving to the school in relationship to um, the efficacy and the growth of the school, the children, the students, the administrators, the teachers, and then looking at how the teachers are implementing. So I think because it is so systematic and explicit, it's so much easier to achieve. I think, and teachers are always saying to me, just just tell me, I want to change, I want to help my kids, I'm there, just tell me, what do I need to do? And that's the specific piece, I think, that, that makes it work for Literacy First. In addition to that, and I, and I don't know if I'm going beyond, is that coaching piece. And again, I'm back to what makes it unique and different is that the Literacy First consultant is someone who steps alongside not only the principal, but most importantly, the teachers. So the teachers are seeing us as a colleague um, and someone who is there to support them in every possible way. So let me talk a little bit about then the nuts and bolts of how we deliver the services that I talked about earlier. Um, if it's an elementary building, we have between uh, five to ten training days, um, between eight to ten coaching days, where the Literacy First consultant comes in and actually spends the day working with the leadership team in the building, working with the teachers, um, looking at the implementation plan, um, looking at how successful it's been, definitely looking at data. Uh, the data is a significant part of what makes this process work. The data drives the instruction. And I could talk ad nauseum about how research supports that, but teachers understand that if they reach the student's instructional level, they're going to move the student on. And what Literacy First delivers to teachers is an ongoing, easy to use, let me emphasize easy to use, data piece that helps them specifically assess, not in general, specifically assess where the student is at so they can deliver instruction. 
other part of that delivery system then for the consultant's day, in addition to the training days, the, the consultant's vit visitation day, is working with grade level teams. So when the consultant is in the building, they'll probably be meeting with some of the grade level teams or if it's middle and high school, some of the content area teams and looking at specific data and then coming up with a plan to address the students' needs based on the data that they're looking at. So data is a huge part of looking logically and systematically at creating plans for individual students, which is very appropriate now to um, the response to intervention for uh, the IDEA 2004 that most school systems are looking at implementing or are in the process of implementing now. So the data's there, the coaching piece that the coach does, once they've looked at the data then, we are um, assessing where students are at and then talking about specific strategies that teachers can use. Um, the strategies are introduced in the training days and then they are modeled by the consultant during the coaching days and again and again. So teachers should have a huge toolkit of strategies to address students' needs. Because uh, we are asking school districts and schools and teachers to step out of the box of the known and sometimes into the unknown, um, it's a little scary. And so oftentimes some of the biggest problems that I encounter as a consultant when I'm working with schools is that um, I'm either asking principals to do something that they are not familiar with or I'm asking teachers to look at delivering instruction in a way that is totally different than they've ever done it before. So sometimes I get, um, I can't do it, and you can't make me, <laughs> kind of feeling. And, and for me, that's good, because I, I, I want them to be able to be honest with me as a consultant, because that's where we start to begin um, solving the problems. And first level for me is to talk about what it looks like, and then for me to go in and model as a consultant um, give them a couple of ideas of what it looks like and for then us to sit down and put our heads together. So I, I honestly have never been, and I've been at this consulting business for Literacy First for about 11 years now, and I have never run into a situation where teachers are not willing, once they feel empowered and once they have the tools in the toolkit, once they have that in place, I've never had a teacher say to me, not doing it. Um, they're willing to try. It's that risk factor. Um, I'm always telling them we eat an elephant a bite at a time. <laughs> and we do that change a bite at a time. Pick something that you can choose and do. Uh, the other thing that I'm looking at that is very difficult sometimes is the scheduling and the time factor. And that's an ongoing process, especially in middle and high schools, for implementing a lot of the Literacy First pieces. When we're talking about getting teachers together for content level meetings, um, when we're talking about doing vertical planning, which is critical for our teachers to have that alignment for uh, the, the curriculum and content K-12, that vertical alignment, that time factor. But again, it's something that when we put our heads together and think creatively, I, my experience is we've never been able not to solve those problems. So the dialogue communication is absolutely a critical piece to obviously making this work. And the idea that all of us are in it together, we're all gonna support each other. There's nothing that all of us together as a team can't solve um, and do well together. Those are the two that I find, but uh, they've never really been a tremendous stumbling block. It is changing that paradigm, and change is difficult. That's why we're there for a three-year um, process, and that's why oftentimes it turns into four. One 
school district I was in for seven years because there was a high turnover in teachers and administrators and they wanted to continue um, the excellent growth that they had had in the past so it just depends on the school district and the district's needs and Literacy First is very adaptable willing to customize so that the school has success.